music. It's a big deal in the modern world. It's one of the most important things that humans have actually contributed to the world, in my opinion. It's something that every single person, no matter what language you speak, no matter what genre of music you like, we can all groove to it. It's amazing. And I'm going to talk about my favorite album or body of work by my favorite band of all time, The Microphones, The Glow Part 2. Now, The Glow Part 2 is the continuation of a project by the one-man band Phil Elverum, a.k.a. The Microphones. Now, Phil Elverum just got done creating his debut album, It Was Hot, So We Stayed in the Water, with a 11-minute track called The Glow. Now, The Glow was basically the standout track in the entire album. And Phil Elverum knew that if he was going to make something that was better than his debut album, he was going to have to expand on the concepts that he came up with in The Glow from It Was Hot, So We Stayed in the Water. But before I talk about that, let's talk about the band's past. Phil Elverum, at the time he created this, was a 23-year-old college student who lived in the North the northwestern region of the United States. And you can tell that from his way his music sounds. His music gives off this campfire aesthetic, and it's very cozy, very acoustic. Almost every single song that's ever made has an acoustic rhythm to it. And it just sounds like something that you would hear play at a campfire, bonfire meetup. Now, before we talk about The Glow Part 2, the main concept of this video, let's talk a little bit about the main genre that the microphones is categorized under now in my opinion the microphones is experimental alt rock multiple different genres can be placed on this band and i'm going to go more into depth with that after i talk about the first track in the glow part two and that is i want wind to blow i want wind to blow is personally my second favorite song from the glow part two Second up to a song I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But The Glow Part 2 has a very short chord progression. It's very fun and one of the most lighthearted songs on the entire record, which, as I'll get into, starts to get a little bit sadder and more moody as the tracks go on. Now, I Won't Want to Blow is basically the call to of not waiting for things to happen to you in your life, taking action, actually putting an effort to everything you do and not just waiting for the world to hand you something. Now let's pick up the pace from where we were. I Won't Win to Blow ends with a very happy chord progression. Uh, as you can hear in a few minutes, it's going to taper off into the glow part too, which has a very rock, heavy rock uh, style chord progression to it. It's very aggressive. And the entire mood of the album changes with the glow part too. It has a lot in uh, similar has a lot of similarities between the glow and the glow part two. The two songs go hand in hand. And personally, I like to listen to them sequentially because it almost tells a story of what's going on in Phil's life. After the glow part two, which is a very dark, moody track, we get a more somber track called "The Moon." Now, personally, "The Moon" is my favorite track from the entire album. It's very melancholy and per in chord progression and in just presentation alone. It's very important to me. And I can listen to it when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm thinking about stuff. It's very humbling, in my opinion. It makes you think about life a lot. And you can tell what Phil's singing about, he cares about deeply. And that goes into the next track, Headless Horseman, which carries along with the rest of the songs. But I'm going to skip through... It's a very long album, up 20 tracks. I'll show it up on the board with how many songs there is, but I'm just going to hit the high points of the album. And Headless Horseman is definitely one of them. But Headless Horseman is very much like The Glow Part 2. It's very heavy. It's very chill. It has lots of great production credit to it. And personally, it's one of my, it's my third favorite song on the album. Now, the rest of the album, up until I would say the 12th or 11th track, goes on from what the basically the building blocks that Headless Horseman laid out from My Roots Are Strong and Deep to the instrumental to the mansion 
to instrumental two to something one to something two, all the way to I'll Not Contain You, which is a very emotional track. It sounds a lot like Headless Horseman. But the song that really differentiates the whole album is the Gleam part two. It is also a continuation from a song from It Was Hot, So We Stayed in the Water. A lot like The Glow, except it wasn't as popular as The Glow, but still Phil thought there were some concepts inside of the song that he wasn't done talking about. And he wanted to add more in-depth stuff with it. It has a very hard drum beat. Some might even say it sounds pretty aggressive. I would say it sounds aggressive too. And I think that aggression goes with it from what Phil's talking about. He's talking about being frustrated with life, not really feeling fulfilled. And I feel like that's very relatable for some people. And sometimes in our lives, we just feel that way. And that goes into Map, You'll Be in the Air. Very chill songs. I would say Map is more aggressive along the lines of The Gleam Part 2. And the rest of the album, instead of talking about a romantic relationship that he was in, basically talks about him feeling aimless in life. After this romantic relationship ended, which we we heard about from I Want When to Blow all the way to The Gleam Part 2, the rest of the songs have very sad titles. One of the saddest is I Want to Be Cold, I Am Bored, I Felt My Size, I Felt Your Shape. They're very heavy songs, and they go all the way up until one of the craziest songs in this whole album, Samurai Sword. Samurai Sword is a very crazy listen in the aggressive rushing drum beats with the crazy guitar in the background, with the vocals that are basically whispered in the background of this crazy, crazy song, talking about getting mauled by a bear, is some of the most descriptive, cryptic, and symbolic storytelling talked about in this entire album. And it goes into one of my favorite tracks, My Warm Blood. My Warm Blood is a very, very meditative outro to this song it's basically about death after samurai sword which is about getting mauled by a bear our hero phil in this story just got done getting mauled by a bear and he is passing off to the afterlife in this almost dreamy type state of just aimlessness but feeling okay with where you're going in life it's almost like he's come to terms with the way he feels And it's very emotional. Made me stop and think a lot. With the foghorn in the background and the different verses he had in the first half of the song, it's a very uh, emotional cut in this record. Now, the rest of the album up until, I would say, the 12th or 11th track goes on from what the basically the building blocks that Headless Horseman laid out from My Roots Are Strong and Deep to the instrumental to the mansion to instrumental two, to something one, to something two, all the way to I'll Not Contain You, which is a very emotional track. It sounds a lot like Headless Horseman. But the song that really differentiates the whole album is The Gleam Part Two. It is also a continuation from a song from It Was Hot, So We Stayed in the Water. A lot like The Glow, except it wasn't as popular as The Glow, but still Phil thought there were some concepts inside of the song that he wasn't done talking about and he wanted to add more in-depth stuff with it it has a very hard drum beat some might even say it sounds pretty aggressive i would say it sounds aggressive too and i think that aggression goes with it from what phil's talking about he's talking about being frustrated with life not really feeling fulfilled and i feel like that's very relatable for some people and sometimes in our lives we just feel that way and that goes into map You'll Be in the Air, very chill songs. I would say Map is more aggressive along the lines of The Gleam Part 2. And the rest of the album, instead of talking about a romantic relationship that he was in, basically talks about him feeling aimless in life. After this romantic relationship ended, which we we heard about from I Want When to Blow all the way to The Gleam Part 2, the rest of the songs have very sad titles. One of the saddest is, I want to be cold, I am bored, I felt my size, I felt your shape. They're very heavy songs, and they go all the way up until one of the craziest songs in this whole album, Samurai Sword. Samurai Sword is a very crazy listen 
in the aggressive rushing drum beats with the crazy guitar in the background, with the vocals that are basically whispered in the background of this crazy, crazy song, talking about getting mauled by a bear, is some of the most descriptive, cryptic, and symbolic storytelling talked about in this entire album. And it goes into one of my favorite tracks, My Warm Blood. My Warm Blood is a very, very meditative outro to this song it's basically about death after samurai sword which is about getting mauled by a bear our hero phil in this story just got done getting mauled by a bear and he is passing off to the afterlife in this almost dreamy type state of just aimlessness but feeling okay with where you're going in life it's almost like he's come to terms with the way he feels and it's very emotional. Made me stop and think a lot with the foghorn in the background and the different verses he had in the first half of the song. It's a very emotional cut in this record.